The way you truly build wealth in this country is to invest in your own idea or somebody else's idea. Some people you need to work a nine to five and it's okay. So many people are copying other people's things opposed to tapping into themselves and really understanding who am I? Who has God called me to be? And what is my assignment here on earth? Everything that you see, it's attainable for nice. you. Yeah. But sometimes you have to get out of your present environment and see something different mm -hmm. to understand what's out there and that it's not, it's not an anomaly. You can have it too. It has to work or it has to work. Welcome to Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis. And y'all been asking for some boss ladies, some CEOs. So I had to make a call and bring on some of the most dynamic ladies that I know. And the dope thing about these ladies, every one of them has a different dynamic. They all bosses. They all are just running amazing businesses and uh, managing families. So without further ado, man, welcome to the the. I want to say the lady, I, I want to say woman boss edition, but that might be trademark. Just welcome to some boss ladies, man. We here. <laughs> so I want to, um, for those who don't know y'all, I just want everybody to take like a minute. Just let the world know who y'all are. Um, I feel like everybody know Halani missed two weeks out, but let them know who you are. This is my business partner, <laughs> yeah. lovely wife. Um, just amazing lady. Let everybody know. Thank you, Neo. Thank yep. you for having me. So I'm Halani Lobdell, AKA Mrs. Two Weeks Out on Instagram. Um, Retired battalion chief, 18 years in the fire service, went on from there to start Body Envy, which is my athleisure wear company, owner of the Loft Athletic Club, the dopest gym in the city, in the state of Georgia, period. Um, now I am a realtor, so just a lot of different things about me. I'm sure we'll get into it during the conversation, but I'm never complacent, always ready to do what's next. and. Um, just strive for greatness all the time. So thanks for having me. I'm happy to have you here. Next, I want to introduce Jessica. So Jessica, y'all, when I, uh, I don't even remember how we first met, but how we first met, I just know three months later, I, I think she saw my car, like I'm gonna get one of them. And like three months later, she went and bought her Lamborghini from trading, not selling education, but actually trading. I'm like, oh, she going crazy. So just let everybody know a little bit about yourself. Athlete, oh, you got a long laundry list of stuff too. So I definitely know. have a long laundry list, but it was the evolution of Jess, I feel like mm. ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on guys? As he mentioned, I'm Jessica Lane. I am a trader. I am a newfound mother and a wife. I feel like I have to preface those because they have really taken the forefront of my life and really just the balance of it all. Um, in that I'm currently opening a school in Tanzania. So now that I just had my baby, I'm picking that back How up. How you say that word? Because I thought it was Tanzania. How you say it the, the people actually over there say Tanzania. I feel like people Tanzania. in America say Tanzania. Got it, so oh. Tanzania. But, so what yeah, is it? Tanzania. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. We all learned yeah. something. Yeah. 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 I was yeah. today years old when I learned <laughs> Tanzania. Yeah. Yeah. So it is on the to-do list to finish that before the end of the year. So wow. we we pushing we pushing that out. I want to be a part heavily. of that somehow. So let me know. Yeah, you should. Yeah, it's a lot of it. people's lives in this world that we you know we have success, but we gotta definitely pay it for it. It's a lot of people in this world that are not as blessed as us yeah. at all. That's and don't fact. even have the opportunity to become. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. So, and, and, and last but not least, uh, Ashley Fox, we've been knowing each other 10 years. Yeah. Um, amazing entrepreneur, financial analyst, worked on Wall Street, CEO of Empify. Let the people know a little bit about you, Ashley, what you got going on. Hey guys, I'm Ashley M. Fox. I am a Howard University grad. Um, former Wall Street analyst where I worked with millionaires and billionaires, realized that for something we use every day of our life, it is not taught in our school system. So I ended up quitting my Wall Street job, starting this company called Empify which is the word empower and modify merge together. So we are a fintech startup that is revolutionizing how adults and children effectively build wealth in this country. And I'm also the CEO of the Wealth Builders Community Act, which is like the Netflix of finance. So now adults have access to financial tools and resources in the palm of their hand. So we've been in prison systems, our programs have been in school systems, we've been in homes in the palm of your hand. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's being able to take and translate Wall Street knowledge to target the 99% that Wall Street often overlook. That's good. Yeah, she, she working on getting me right. Yeah, yeah. I know, like I said, Forex stocks. I got to ask y'all something. Y'all all got this in common because I want to know what keeps y'all consistent. Like every single one of y'all work out every day. Like, and I know there may be ladies watching like, 
that's trying to figure out how to work out every day or what makes y'all stick with working out? Of course, you own a gym, so I don't know if it's different, but I know this won't have nothing to do with business, but I'm curious to know what keeps y'all consistent because I can't find myself just lifting every day or <laughs> doing push-ups. So what's, this, what's each of y'all's secret to make y'all just keep working out every day? You want me to go first? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, she the gym owner. I yeah, go, go on, go on. <laughs> for me, it's not even about owning a gym. For me, it's one of the, I, I started, re, I was always an athlete. Growing mm. up, I ran track, drill team, all that stuff. But for me, when I got into the fire service, it was an outlet for me, mm. mentally. And so that's where I kind of, I would get off, head to the gym and take my stress out there because I couldn't bring home the things that I was seeing because they don't understand that. Jason was like, I don't want to hear about all this death and the gore. And, you know, yeah. it was a lot, you know. So we had each other. But then outside of that, those that station or that battalion, so to speak, I didn't have anything at home yeah. to kind of just get that stress off of me. And so that's where the gym like just really became something that I did. So now, although I'm no longer with the fire service, it's still something that I do on a regular basis because it's my peace. Yeah. It, it get it, if you release those endorphins, you just feel good. I like lifting. I like slinging up weights. I like yeah. feeling the burn. Yeah. Like it's just me now. Yeah. It's, it's what they say is it's on you. Wait, it's, in you, it's not, not on, on you, you yeah, right? It's in you, yeah. not on you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about yeah. you? Yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, I do not work out every day. Okay, so well, I trained to. for. I well, let like me tell you. Let me out. tell you. So, yeah. I trained for the Olympics right after I graduated from Spelman, and I was working out literally six hours a day, every single day, three hours in the morning, three hours in the evening. I really definitely got burnt out like from doing it so intensely. So now I have to find fun stuff. Yeah. to do to um kind of supplement that so like i kind of got into like like pole dancing but it's like i don't do the pole like it's like very <laughs> artistic i didn't nobody even really knows that so i don't even know why i just told y'all that but i'm talking about just finding things that you love to do that are fun like mm -hmm. fun fitness things like i like rock climbing now like and with pole, I don't do it like janky with no clothes on and stuff yes. like that. But it's really one of the hardest workouts you can do. It is. Right. Like, for up. real. It's your entire, it's like doing pull-ups nonstop. Yeah. For facts. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about it, when I think about going to the strip club and seeing people like that, oh, I'm like, I'm cut out that I even told these people that I did it. Yeah. I'm going to be like, what, Jess no, on not, the pole? Yeah, that's <laughs> not, whole fitness, y'all. Whole fitness. Yes, 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 whole fitness. But you said something. I think for me, I, I don't get it. I have zero desire to lift weights or do any, but I love basketball. I love riding yeah. my four-wheeler. So similar yeah. to you, I'm looking for fun things yeah. that, ball, we doing that three times out of the week, yeah. and it's my exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Riding my four-wheeler like yeah. i'm looking to do rock climbing yeah, yeah. so yeah, i think yeah, yeah. i think people gotta find yeah. that might be the you key gotta find the you thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah find what yeah. You i play three days like a week and i get excited about right, playing right. but you tell me go run on a treadmill yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. find yeah. what you love because that's what was wrong with me when i was training for the olympics the three hours in the morning was non-stop cardio so we would have to run three miles a day on top of swimming yeah. were you a then runner in the evening was straight boxing no were you what, what, what sport did you play oh boxing Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That's extensive. Yikes. Yeah, it what was. About, what about yeah, you? So for me, so I've always been an athlete. I love tennis. Mm -hmm. So I always had the shape of an athlete. Mm -hmm. And my body started to uh, detach from certain foods. And mm -hmm. so like my body, I couldn't drink alcohol. Just my body started to reject certain foods. And I fought it for a very long time. And I went to a holistic nutritionist and she told me that my body's rejecting anything that slows me down. Mm. And I, in that moment, I started to be disconnected to certain types That's of bar. people. And say that bar again. That's yeah. a bar. What did I say? She my said, body I say so many, I don't even remember. From anything that slows me down. Yeah, so That's because I don't like, so, like yeah. they went through all the foods that were making me sick and they're like, oh, these are all things that are slowing you down. So, but when I went to a doctor, no one scientifically could tell me what was wrong. Mm. And so... And so I realized that something outside of me has called me to be the best version of myself. Yeah. Mm. And so it made me realize, well, have you ever been the best Ashley physically? Have you been the best daughter? Have you been the best friend? Like, what does it look like for me the, to be the best in every area of my life? Because I naturally had, an, I had a body that was nice. People, you know, I always got compliments, but I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, well, what does it look like if you are intentionally serving your body? And so I wanted to get a trainer. 
Mm-hmm. And and so I'm also the type of person that I need a big audacious goal to hit to make me accomplish something. And once I do it, it's old and I gotta head the next big thing. So first it was I want I wanted abs and I wanted to be able to do pull-ups. And so I would go on my train, I'll see guys always doing pull-ups. And so when I go to the gym, I look at the ladies for their clothes and I look at the guys for motivation. So guys were doing pull-ups, so I try to do a pull-up and I couldn't do it. And I'm like, now nah, I'm gonna figure out how to do this pull-up. And so I kind of just kept going at it. And in, in, in that process, I started to measure my muscle mass, measure my body fat, and it became a habit. And so I felt like if you're gonna be the best at everything, what, what, what is it like if you're intentional with your health? And so I became so intentional that it became a habit. Mm-hmm. So now my next thing is abs, and, and I'm learning it's not working out, and, not, and it's like, it's, it's actually, you know, how many calories are you eating? Are you eating, you know, you might be getting protein here, but are you eating vegetables? And so now it's like, what does it look like if you eat the best? And so for me, it was, intention mm. but then it became a habit and so now i treat myself when i, wa- I treat myself to watch tv so it's like okay cool you want to watch tv you got to do cardio in the morning so mm. i'll watch my episode of suits or something like that and i'll do cardio everybody talking about suits, oh my god right? you gotta get in the suits good. when she said I think that, you told me that the other day. <laughs> i did it was somewhere you was like what you is suits what is it about i never even <laughs> watched yeah, yeah, it's good but every the writing is so it's so yeah, good that's good. like what we binge watch binge yeah watch, right, yeah every night jason too yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and it's, thing it, right now. there's a season nine that's on Peacock. It's not on Netflix. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, mm, a lot of people don't plug. know. Mm-hmm. I just finished it last week. Okay, it's good. Speak. I want to touch on some she said yeah. though about mm-hmm. nutrition just being the most important part because yeah. like immediately after my baby, I snapped back. But it wasn't just going into the gym. Mm-hmm. It's the constant consistency with eating the right foods. So mm-hmm. when you said your body yeah. rejected it, that's why I was like, that's a bar because people don't understand that like your health is really tied to what you consume. Yeah. Absolutely. Day in and day out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It shows in everything, your skin, your hair, I mean, yep. everything. If you're not treating your body a certain type of way, it shows on the outside. So but how we make it a priority that. for people to understand that is really important. Like, I mean, people dying left and right. Like, I don't know what gets in somebody's mind where they're like, I actually got to change this. Like, I never, and I love eating. I'm talking about, I eat a cheese steak every day. I mean, chicken cheese. Like, <laughs> I didn't care. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm 34. I, at the time I was 35, I'm 36 now, but I'm like, well, I got time, mm-hmm. assuming you have time, mm-hmm. but I took Bobby, uh, Dr. Holistic, shout out to him, I took his cleanse. Mm-hmm. It's like a vegan cleanse, and I didn't fully do it right, meaning I ate vegan for 30 days, but then I haven't ate meat, fish, or seafood in six months from doing, and yeah. I'm talking about I would have never thought I would, never in my mindset, yeah. so I'm just wondering what, I don't know how to get through to people how to for well, them to understand that health is important. Unfortunately, it's systemic racism when you think about like we're surrounded by energy dense foods in most of our mm-hmm. communities. Yep. So this, that's how we say it one more time. What is it mm-hmm. called? Energy, energy dense foods like we're, dense, we're like mm-hmm. convenience mm-hmm. stores. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Popeyes, yeah. like all of these foods that we have, like they aren't nutritious at all, yeah. and that's how we're raised. Yeah. 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 It's and hard. so then it's, ultimately yeah. that's what you end up liking. You don't mm-hmm. want to deviate from that because that's what that's you like. Yeah. But think yeah. about where we live. Like I love me some it's Popeyes. Whole Foods down the street. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. But then yeah. you have these primarily Caucasian neighborhoods where you're going to find a Whole Foods. You're going to find a Kill Me Crazy. You're mm-hmm. going to find an Arden's Garden. But you can't go to the east side mm-hmm. and necessarily find that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's definitely yeah. your environment. For me, it was not my choice. I still, I I went through a state of like depression for a while because we also don't realize how mentally connected we are to food. There were times where I was not hungry, but I wanted food psychologically Mm -hmm. and I craved certain things. And so for me, like my favorite food is a cheeseburger, but I don't know the last time I had a cheeseburger, but like, I like that stuff. But I felt like when I say I would get sick, like really, really sick so much it would make me cry because I was I was so busy fighting who I used to be mm-hmm. and I had to accept who I was and who I was becoming. So for me, I didn't it was a it was a something outside of Ashley said this is but now that I think about who I am today, because this was like two, three years ago, if I think about the life that I live now, there was no way in hell I would have been able to physically survive eating candy every single day the way I did. Mm. So I feel like my body or my spirit was preparing me for the version of who I am today so that I can be my sharpest doing what I do. And I think I got to a place where I accepted that, which yeah. wasn't easy for me to do, but I accepted you've got to be the best and most present. If you were going to be this person to the world, I don't need anything to slow you down. And so for me, I had to make a conscious choice. And once I saw that, 
then it was like, okay, I need to pay for this. Like we were talking about having a personal trainer and things like that. Like I have to pay for a chef. I don't want a meal prep. I need custom meals because I have a custom diet, but I got to be willing to pay for those kind of things. So I think it's about the investment you want to make and yeah. choose to make in yourself and being cognizant of just what you are surrounded by. And it's like, if this is what you want, then fine. But if you want something different, you got to choose to operate in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You That's said great. something. You, it's a choice, like all of it. You know, Just like when you did Dr. Holistic. Yeah. Um, that was definitely a choice. It, right. Because we were doing it all at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think Justin went the long, J.O. went the longest with yeah. it. But yeah. it really, it was a choice to do, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of people they don't make that commitment. Right. They'd rather mm -hmm. go out, smoke hookah, mm -hmm. do all these things. And it's like, well, I don't have money for a trainer. I don't have money to eat healthy. I don't have money to, you know, but it's like, but you're, you're investing in all this stuff that has no benefit to you whatsoever. It's actually, a, it's a, a hazard to your health. Yeah. And the things that actually can do something for you to make you better, to make you sharper, to get you to where you're trying to be goal wise, you got every excuse in a book mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. So I think it starts with that person saying to themselves, I got to make a change because yeah. you can live on the east side and you can go to Publix and get some better um, options. Arden Gardens is sold at um, Publix, you know, so you find the areas in your area that has the things that you need. But you have to make a conscious choice to be able to say, this is where I'm going. This is this is the direction I need to head in and do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and once you get fixated, like you right now, I mean, shoot, you've been vegan now for, yeah. almost <laughs> for months. Vegan. Well, almost, yeah, yeah. Almost. yeah. But you but, know, but yeah. you've changed but that's a, a lot. Hard, huge, for me, I'm talking about it, it is hard filet too. mignon, yeah. all of that. As soon as I get to a restaurant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And look how you've changed too. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. You know, you and then your family follows suit. Yeah. You yeah. feel different. When yeah. I, I would eat certain foods, I remember I was living in Paris for a summer and I couldn't eat pasta in America, but when I ate pasta in Paris, I didn't get sick. Mm. It's and different. it's like the foods are just different, yeah. but you feel a different way when you eat certain types of foods. Yeah. And I think I've been able to see like, what makes me feel heavier? What makes yeah. me feel sadder? What like, and I was also drawn to foods based, based off of the emotions that I was going through too. So there's so many different things. I think it's just being in touch with who you are and what works for you. Yeah. Because it's one thing that's actually hard too, which is even challenging is like when I go to the airport, there's nothing I can eat in the airport. I can only get water and maybe like skinny popcorn. And you gotta go to the Delta Lounge. Yeah, no, I do. No, I'm oh, saying, but I'm just saying like sometimes <laughs> when I'm, I just want to go and grab something. Yeah. Sometimes it's sad knowing like all this stuff in the store and that can't everybody eat. can eat yeah. and I can't eat it. Right. Like, and that's it's more emotional too than just physical. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we just did a whole health segment. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by the law. Hey. Yeah, you know what I mean? Body envy. Step get y'all get y'all gear. Exactly. Yeah. So for you, Lonnie, I, I want to talk to the the I guess the husband or wife out here who you Jason been an entrepreneur a long time. You were working for I want to say 18 years, yeah. and you never thought about becoming an entrepreneur. And then something, what was the thing? Cause I know what made the change um, for you and how do you support your significant other when, when you are not in it? Because a lot of times I hear from people like, like, well, I hear they don't support me or was it you weren't in it, but you were still supporting it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so talk, I guess, talk through those things, I guess. Yeah, so I wasn't in it because I didn't like the ebbs and flows of entrepreneurship. Yeah. I like stability. Yeah. Even to this day, yeah. I like stability. Yeah. Hook me up with stable. That's yeah. it. Let yeah. me know what my check is yeah. every two weeks. Like, let me know. Salary me. I'm yeah. good with that. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And in our dynamic, that worked for us because yeah. when he was going through those ebbs and flows, yeah. I was the one that had the consistency to be able to say, don't worry about it. Yeah. I'll take care of the bills. You yeah. figure this piece out. Mm -hmm. I got it. You know. So I always supported him. And even when I didn't understand or I was sick of him flip flopping like mm. I'm gonna start this now I'm like you just started a business I'm yeah, about yeah. to do this one I would keep my thoughts to myself you know and I'm like let me see what he's gonna do and he always would carry us through always you know and um he always made a place for me too and we've talked about that on other podcasts where I didn't realize what he was doing but he was kind of grooming me for entrepreneurship and my mom was an entrepreneur she mm. had a daycare facility for years mm. you know I worked in her daycare facility mm. as a kid but my dad was in public safety so I had both ends of the spectrum in my own household and didn't, that didn't resonate with me until now I'm 41 now. Yeah. Now I'm like, dang, I had both yeah. ends in my household. But Jason always made a space for me. So in the gym, you know, he started the gym and it was like, okay, I need you to come in and teach your class. Okay, X28, I need you to do lower body blast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that he did, it was, I need you to do this over here. And so 
it just kind of, I guess, subconsciously started moving me towards that direction. So even when I started Body Envy, I still worked. Mm-hmm. I was one of those that's like, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, but I also work a nine to five, so yeah. to speak. It's not wrong with it. It's nothing both. wrong with yeah. it. You do it. And I secured my pension. I yeah. did it for a reason. I was yeah. smart with it. I yeah. secured my pension. And the only reason why I left that nine to five was because I looked up and my kids were older. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, my daughter's in high school. Yeah. And this job right here takes precedent over everything I got going on at home because lives are at stake. So yeah. I had to make a decision like, OK, got to walk away from this now. Mm-hmm. Everything has an expiration date, right? So yeah. I'm like, this will be mine. But it allowed me to go totally into entrepreneurship. So I'll say this is that entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It's not. That's a fact. It's not. Some people, you need to work a nine to five. You yeah. need to have somebody to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why, mm-hmm. all of that. And it's okay, you know. But if you're in a, a situation in a, in a relationship where one is an entrepreneur and one isn't, be supportive of each other. And being supportive doesn't mean that you have to completely understand or agree, or it just means that you have to be there. Yeah. And and do your part. Marriage, a relationship, is a partnership in every way. And so I just played my position. My mm-hmm. position was to be there and be his support when things were not going good for him. Well, shoot, I got us. And I'm going to bring up the rear. If that meant I had to work a part-time job, shoot, we did that too. Mm. I'm going to get off from working 24-hour shifts and I'm going to go work 12 hours on an ambulance. Or, mm. you know, been, been there, done that. Yeah. But at the same time, that's why we're so locked in too. Yeah. That's why we 21 years marriage, yeah. married, yeah. you know, because yeah. he knows I'm always going to be there. And same for me. I know he's always going to make a way for me. We're always going to lock in. Yeah. So, you know, to sum it up, I'll just say that for those people that have that dynamic, because there's a lot of people like that. We meet them all the time. And it's like, well, my husband or my wife doesn't support me. You better start supporting. Yeah, because I hear that a lot. I'm talking about like, yeah. yo, they be talking down on what I got going yeah. on. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. I never heard my wife tell me I can't do something or don't do it or just discourage it. Imagine if you did. I would be hurt. Exactly. I don't know what I... It would be over for me. How could you it's perform optimally if the person you lay your head next to every night is like, what you doing? You can't do it. Why are you doing this? That's crazy. You'll never be anything. That's crazy. How? I can't even, th- as you saying, I'm rejecting it because I can't even, but people going through that every night. They go, But then they wonder why their relationship is in the state that it's in. Yeah. It's for better or for worse, right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't say that we had to agree on everything and I had to be 100% in harmony with everything. Yeah. If you're not out here cheating and putting hands on me or whatever, we <laughs> go start in businesses. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. Yeah. We'll start another one. Yeah. Or we'll figure out a way, you know, but the support has to be. That's a non-negotiable. Yeah. The support has to be there. Yeah. I agree. Yo, I've had the privilege to help hundreds and hundreds of people all around the world open up their own profitable event spaces, utilizing my signature formula. Number one, how to find a space. Number two, how to fund the space and how to automate the space. I've been in Atlanta, Georgia now living for two years. My spaces are still in Philadelphia operating, doing extremely well because we use the same exact formula that I break down, right? If you're interested in learning how we can help you, I want you to go to eventspacesecrets.com, watch a training or book a call with our team to see if you are a good fit. Again, this is for you specifically if you're looking for other ways to leverage your money and turn that into other streams of income, right? I don't believe there's a better time than right now for you to get tapped into the information in the game that can help you. So again, go to eventspacesecrets.com, watch the trainer and book a call with our team to see if you're a good fit for this opportunity. Let's go. So you newly found mother, we always talk about, uh, you like, yo, being a mother, running a business, I first want you to preference, because I know you'll talk about it later, just trading, Forex and all of that. You took off, uh, what, two years or a year and a half? A year. Because the power of that skill, like just, I just kind of want people to understand, like most people don't have a choice to do that. It ain't no taking off. So how, do, how, how good did that feel that you learned the skill where you had the ability to be like, yo, I'm, I'm taking this off? Yeah, um, honestly, I think it's just a matter of alignment. Yeah. And when I always talk about, I've said this before, where it's like my, my dad told me a long time ago, don't ever be stuck where you you are depending on a guy. Mm. Now I know that might sound super bad because I am in a relationship that is a very, like I love my partner so much, but he said, don't ever need a man. I think it was like a situation where he was dealing like, I don't know. He had somebody he was talking to and the the guy like put his hands on it. What you just basically said. 
if you ain't putting your hands on me, this and that, like right. we can work it through. Yeah. But he was putting her hands on her and she stayed because she had no security mm. in any other place. So he always like taught me the importance of providing for you myself. You to fight too though. So I wanted to learn. <laughs> she boxing. I just wanted to learn how can I make the most money possible without any governing bodies to tell me what I'm worth. Mm. So I can be black, mm. I could be young, yep. I could be a woman, and I can make as much money as I want to without anybody telling me anything. Yeah. And I don't have a headache doing so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I say alignment, like me just constantly reaching for that goal, put me in a position where like, don't get it wrong, trading is hard. Yeah. It's 100% hard, but you have to learn the skill set. Once you have the skill set, it's in your brain. You have it forever. Yeah. And then all you're doing is really just adapting to the market as it goes. But for me, it was really just taking, just understanding that alignment and understanding, okay, I'm in this space and this place for a time as this. God prepared me for what was coming next. Yeah. And now I'm in this season where I can reap the rewards that I put forth so much work yeah. to accomplish. That's good. Let me ask you this, but when he was telling you like, don't depend on the guy, what was the, what was the, uh, the strategy then though, was it learn a skill? No, 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 no. Actually, my dad was a career counselor at Georgia State. So when I said that I was doing entrepreneurship, he thought that I was batshit crazy, okay? He was like, you did not go to Spelman to be an entrepreneur. They didn't even want me to box. That's a whole different story. Like <laughs> I'm talking about, I was living in DC in my car for a minute. Cause my wow. parents was like, you gotta go to grad school or what, it, what are we doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it was just me wanting this for myself. Mm. Like me wanting better for myself, me wanting that number. Like he told me that, but in his mind, he was still talking about a nine to five security. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's just saying, go do something, but don't depend on the Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just saying, make sure you always have your own, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. But then me. I like that. You said a few, uh, a minute ago, you got to have this big a a astronomical goal. And then once you accomplish it, it's like I had met a trader and I think he told me he like made a hundred thousand dollars in a day. I didn't really think that was possible. Mm. I didn't think it was possible. Yeah. Like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. You know you did. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah. I, I, what? Like you think about it. Yeah. When people go to college, they get a job just so they can make a hundred thousand dollars in a year. Mm -hmm. You don't even yeah. realize what's possible. Some people say, I remember being in school and saying, okay, when I first graduated um, high school, my dad said, what do you want your major to be? Well, computer science, they make about a hundred thousand dollars per year. You should mm -hmm. do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how people are approaching school. Yeah. So based on the salary. Yeah. My goal and me understanding somebody can make a hundred thousand dollars in a way. Oh hell no. How can I do that? Okay, how can I make the most money? Okay, I gotta do this. Oh, all I gotta do is learn this skill set. What? Yeah. And can't nobody take it away from me? Yeah. Okay, bet. Let's do that. Let's yeah. learn that. It's so crazy you said I be telling people like your focus needs to be a skill set right now. I'm like that's all you, I don't care if it's Forex, I don't care if it's stocks, I don't care if it's sales, like you get good at one thing, it can pay you handsomely. So I'm always just like preaching, just learn the skill set. Yeah, like, and I being mean, consistent, important. cause get, don't get me one. wrong and, and not quitting, because I will say like, I lost so much money before I ever made money. Yeah. Trading is hard as hell. So anybody who wants to be a trader, I'm not trying to deter you. I 100% think you should tap into it, but it is a hard skill set to learn. And once you learn it, you have to master it. And then you have to learn compounding. And then you have to go through the psychology of trading, which is a whole different thing. Yeah. Because if you don't come from money, then you're scared of losing money. So yeah. then it's this whole thing of like, oh, overcoming yourself yeah. that you now have to lock into. Mm, that's crazy, mm. that's a lot. So Ash, I wanna ask you because you were, just just talk about how she saw like somebody make 100K in a day. Mm -hmm. Your last job as, a, as an analyst on Wall Street, I wanna say you only talk with people who managed between- Who had uh, at least 25 million. So if had, you had less than 25 million, we sent you downstairs. Right. So you had to have at least $25 million. That's just crazy. So I don't even talk to you unless you got $25 million in your account. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. talk, talk about, like, what, what did that do to you mentally to make you understand that it's so much more out here? So I think, so I was that girl, I had to make six figures. And I went to Howard because engineering or finance could make you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
And I wanted to major in psychology, though, but you had to have like a master's or a doctorate. So when I went to Howard, they taught you how to eat, how to dress. The companies came and I found out they paid you $10,000. I said, I need that job. So as an wait, intern, wait, ten thousand dollars as yeah. an intern for yeah. ten weeks. Yeah. So I'm about 18, 19 years old, buying, going to Fifth Avenue, buying Gucci bags because I was making money and I had, you know, I didn't know what to do with my money. But when I got there, so I only wanted it for the prestige, like that was it. I had to be the best, and I, how am I going to be this black phenomenal woman on Wall Street? So I had four internships. Three, three of them were at Wall Street Bank. So I had the money back then. Like women were wearing toy birch dresses. I'm like, I, like everything I saw, I wanted to feel that feeling, yeah. and so I, I did it. But when I was on Wall Street, um, our clients were like, first off, I learned all the things on the internet are wrong. <laughs> Forbes is an option, not a requirement. And all the data you see about people is not correct because I could see what I saw on the internet and I can Google their, ne- I mean, not Google, go in our system and see how much money they had in their bank account. And I'm talking about athletes, owners of basketball teams, owners of the, like people you know. Like I, I saw how much they donated to presidents. Like I'm like, why isn't this on the internet? But it, you, it's a choice to have the internet to know how much money you have and what you do with it. But it just got to a point where eight months in, I didn't want my job anymore. And not that I didn't want it, it just was, I did everything I could to be there, but I did not do everything to stay there. Mm. And I couldn't understand, why don't you want to stay late? Why don't you want to be the best? Like, and I started to think something was wrong with me because I, just, I wasn't the best employee either, but I was good because of where I worked. On paper, I looked good, I had the money, I had the clothes. Went back home to Philly, I'm making six figures, but it's like my one salary, what I got in a year, was what they would pay as a fee in one of their hundreds of mutual funds. Mm. And it's like, we don't see anything wrong with that. Like why, and, but I'm rich over here, but when you're, when you're in a bank account of billionaires and it's like, you're helping them finance their fifth home or watch them spend the summers in South of France, but then you see their kids making thousands of dollars off of dividends. And these are like trust fund, like I'm, but I, I was sitting in some of these meetings cause it was my job to support the team so i would i would have the conversation with the trust and estate attorney with the uh banker with the investor to understand the full holistic picture of what a multi-millionaire billionaire was how they were living how they could opt like because when you get to that certain threshold you can't walk to a branch their products don't service you anymore and you get to a space where your job is to protect grow and preserve your wealth that's it and avoid taxes protect so so preserve grow. grow and avoid taxes that's it that was that's what your job is because you get that much money, you don't you don't want to give it away to the government. You want to make sure your kids can sustain it, and you also want to make more. That's the standard. So for me, it was like, and so I'm I'm a firm believer that success leaves clues, right? Like, follow the blueprint. So if they bought, so I, I remember the first time. One of the biggest things I noticed is that they all would have multiple accounts and they all had them titled. And so I'm like, okay, but they're all titled like this is a school account. This is this. And this is whether check-ins or savings or anything. So I went downstairs to the bank and I opened three savings accounts and I titled them differently. I saw they invested $100 million, I took $100. They went to the South of France for the summer, rented a yacht. I went to the South of France. My yacht wasn't as big, but I rented it. Like For me, it was like I saw that version of me because I could touch it. And so not a lot of people were able to see what I saw, but it's like, let me start reading the books. These That's when I started reading. Like, let me start reading the books they're reading, travel where they're traveling. Let me go to all, you know, like, and I started to put myself in that space because I knew I could be like that. And so it, Part of it does hurt your self-esteem because at this point I'm the only black girl on my floor. So I, but I'm also the type of person if I walk into a room and you say something I don't know, I'm googling it. So I, I'm, they were going to like Switzerland for the weekend, and I'm like, well, where the hell is Switzerland at? Yeah, like, yeah. so I would Google all these places. Like, oh, they go, I'ma go. And I started to travel around the world because I saw rich people doing it. So for me, it opened my mind to what was possible, and I realized that. And I always tell people this, the way you truly build wealth in this country is to invest in your own idea or somebody else's idea. Like, and I was on track. I had a great career, great on, on my resume, but I was not on track to be a client. So it's like, if I'm not, I'm sitting at the wrong end of the table. Like mm. we took our clients to the top floor of the building to have a client meeting. The floor smelled different. The food tasted, and it just was like, I want that life. And so it gave me the perspective to know I deserve to be like that client. So when I see people, you know, so my, it's funny cause it's like, when you go through the space of making money, 
in how you mentioned, like, you can't be afraid to lose money. I've been at, been in points where I've been kicked out of my place, but I know I'm going to be a billionaire because I saw it. Like, yeah. but when can't you're not used, it. when you make your first hundred thousand in a month, it's like, whoa, like, I'm not used to this. But girl, you, you think it's too small because you know what it looks like and what they do with that kind of money. So for me, mm. it opened my mind. And, it's, and sometimes I think because of the audience I serve, I'm targeting the people that aren't on Wall Street. And it's like, sometimes it's like, take me back to Wall Street just so I could taste it again. Like, let me go, let me go remind myself like what it's like to feel like that. Let me take those trips. And so I think you, sometimes I get so caught up in my business that I forget, like sometimes you gotta be around an environment that doesn't look like you, mm -hmm. an environment that stretches you where you're now the smallest person in the room. But for me, I mean, it led me to a point where I ended up quitting my job to like, I'm gonna go build something. Let me go build my own JP Morgan because that's where I used to work, you know? So, so yeah, open my mind personally. Yeah, and that's me, I love, I love the that. idea. I love that, yeah. yeah. I love what she said about, it's exposure. She yes, was exposed to a whole different world, which let her see that that could be her world, too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important for just people, anybody that's listening to this podcast, right, to understand that everything that you see, it's attainable for yeah. you. Yeah. It's definitely attainable, but sometimes you have to get out of your present environment and see something different mm -hmm. to understand what's out there and that it's not it's not an anomaly. You can have it, too. That's a fact. You know, and then you you get into these different circles where be uncomfortable in mm -hmm. these rooms. Yeah. Like, we used to talk about that all the time. Like, be uncomfortable in the rooms that you're in because, yeah, you are the small person for now, but it exposes Man. you to everything that you don't see because you're so accustomed to be around the people that you're comfortable with because y'all are on the same playing field mm -hmm. but you need to get away from that yeah because that exposure that you saw helps you to see like dang i'm on i'll never be able to do what they're doing if i stay right here right, right. i'm on the other end of the table the mm -hmm. wrong side of the table and i think it was no coincidence that i wasn't the best employee either mm -hmm. like but but if but when i think about my career path like I ended up working in a white collar job with millionaires and billionaires, and then I taught in the prison system, right? So I have a perspective of how America is a really a well-oiled machine from how it looks from the richest person's eyes to being in a prison system, to the public school system. It would, I wouldn't have been able to do what I've done if I started in the school system and then worked on Wall Street mm -hmm. because my level of what's possible for the people I serve comes from what I saw. So they borrow my belief because I was able to see something that the world may never see because of the career path that I chose. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you, Alani. So mic drop. yeah, that was my <laughs> drop. She snapped out. So you're mother, wife, running multiple businesses, gym, brand, and now you're ventured off into real estate, uh, about to go get some people these homes. Um, and you talked about not being stuck. Like, um, how important is it to just be able to continue, like so many people get stuck and they don't evolve. And ever since I've known you, it's a constant level of pushing yourself to achieve the best in everything that you do. Like when you set your mind to something, you get it. Like, is that always been just in you? Like once you set your mind on something, you gonna go, you give everything you do, everything you got. Always. I just want people to understand the importance of that. Yeah, always. I always go into something, whatever I'm doing, head down. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is a new space for me. Yeah. I have to learn. I have to soak up as much information as I can. Once I get the information, I can run. Yeah. But I have to be able to do what I need to do. So even like I was telling Jessica before we started taping that some of my other businesses, I'm kind of putting them on pause right now because I need to focus right yeah. now on this because it's a new space for me. Yeah. And this is, you know, real estate, that's the biggest purchases people make is real estate, that's you know? I'm um, just home ownership for people. That's probably the largest purchase that they'll make in their entire life, you know? Plus the legalities that are behind it, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I'm not playing around with it. Yeah. So like, let me pause some of these things. We're not ending them, we're just pausing them yeah. for a second because yeah. I'm one person, right? But literally everything that I do, I do it with the intention of being the best at it all. Yeah. But I have to say that, I'm human, so I have my doubts. And when things start going left, I'm like, did I make the right choice? I'm, I question myself sometimes, like, should I have left the fire service? Like, should I have not stayed? You know, I question myself some days, but I have to say that being around people like you guys, like, you know how instrumental you've been with my success, just even just saying, hey, do this. Yeah. And when you know that certain people are in certain situations and you trust them, I'm able to say, okay, yeah. and do it. And it turns out amazing. And so it's having not only yourself to tap into, not only I like, have Jason, of course, he's the one that pushed me to get into real estate, yeah. you know, so I have him, but having those other people that see your potential, the things that you don't even see about yourself, yeah, you know, cool. they can look at you and say, hey, 
you should do this because you're great at this. Yeah. You might see it for yourself. That's and so I fact. think that's always helped me to just really excel in everything. I, I mean, even just growing up being a student in, in school, it was like, I got to get straight A's. Like, mm. there's, I just have to, because that's what I wanted for me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then when I went to college, it was, got to get a degree. Yeah. Fire service. I got to move up the ranks. I can't just stay riding tailboard. I yeah. have to be a ranking person within this department and being a black female, you know, you're always coming in as kind of like the underdog. Mm -hmm. And I love that, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm like, I'm gonna show, I can show you better than I can tell you, yeah. you know? And so I'll always operate like that. So now coming into this real estate space, I'm like, I'm ready to take over. Yeah, I know you on, I'm speaking at first year, selling like 20 million in cribs. Oh, me too, Neo. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about happen. it, okay? That, that, <laughs> that's, the, that's the basement for you, 20 yeah. million. In, in Atlanta, that could be like... Easy. 40, like five houses, for real, for real. It ain't Easy. even gotta be a lot of cribs. Because the average house right now, you're talking is about 430K yeah. right now. Yeah, so. and that's, and I mean, you're, and if y'all looking at this, y'all know what it missed two weeks. I, I know she got an Instagram for uh, her. What's the Instagram for you? Is it uh, Real Houses of Atlanta? Real, ho Real <laughs> Houses of Atlanta. So y'all make sure y'all go out and buy them houses from her. Absolutely. But um, yeah, it's just it's just it's powerful when you set your mind on something. You just you really just go head on. I think people gotta start doing it. You gotta go all in. There's no other way, and I yeah. think that's where the ball is kind of dropped for a lot of people. Is because they expect instant success with things and yeah, if it doesn't come instantly like it doesn't work like that no, if it no. doesn't happen instantly it's like well this is not for me mm -hmm. but what what work did you put in what did you what what did you do to solidify your success what did you do it's not based off like people get really hung up on social media well i have a following so because i have a following that means that whatever i drop should go no mm -mm. that's not the real sure. world that, and then as soon as they, they see don't get that, that they don't get it they be like post me it ain't gonna do, do nothing that. right <laughs> <laughs> exactly Throw me in your stories. <laughs> All right, I got you. Right. You got to keep doing it over and, and over, over and, and over, over again. Yeah. Unless you Beyonce or you got, you, don't work. Like, I believe you got to just put more work in. That's the thing. People don't want to work. Yeah. They want it the easy way. Yeah. Everything requires a form of work. Y'all yeah. ever see this? Yo, post me. You go on their page, it ain't posted. Right. <laughs> Yo, you right. mind throwing this flyer up? I go look at their page. You don't got you this. You got it up. So why <laughs> Yo, you want throw me? the link in your uh, story? You don't even got it on in your bio, <laughs> exactly. man. Exactly. What are we doing? Yeah. It's a lot of backwards thinking. Yeah. But you have to put the work in and understand that success takes time. Everything yeah. doesn't come overnight. Some yeah. things will jump real quick. Yeah. And then some things are going to just take more time. The main thing is, is making sure you're giving it your all. Yeah. In every single way. Yeah. And so, you know, that's just, that truly is what I do. It seemed like all y'all was raised up. Y'all, mom and dad, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no. Yeah, but no. What you mean by like? <laughs> you know, my dad was there, but he wasn't there. Got he was, it. He very much a womanizer. Mm. So they divorced when I was 16. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But but it seemed like y'all always instilled with, I don't know, if that go get it. Like go, yeah. go make this thing happen from what I'm hearing. Like, mm -hmm. So I think that's important. I think more ladies got to just go. You got to go get it now. I'm learning now. You can't depend on nobody. You well, got to go get it. That and I think that like my God, God, my parents definitely instilled my faith in me. Mm -hmm. So really just understanding even for what you said and what you said in regards to your alignment and how God synchronized things in your life to where now you're able to help so many people because of the order in which it flowed. And when you yeah. talk about your life, you know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of people aren't able to move because they're lost. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really don't understand their true purpose in this world. And they look at other things. They'll say, oh, I want to start a clothing line because Halani's doing a clothing line. But that's not even their thing. That's mm -hmm. not what God put them on this earth to do. So it will never be anointed because it's not your thing. Yeah. So many people are copying other people's things opposed to tapping into themselves and really understanding who am I? Who has God called me to be? And what is my assignment here on earth? So those are three questions you asked. Who am I? I don't remember. Well, that was good. No, <laughs> what has God I mean, called me to be? What has God called what me is, to be? What has is, what is God called me to be? Uh -huh. And you uh, said, what is my assignment here on this earth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I that, feel like you can start figuring some things out asking you yourself in three questions. You can. Really yeah. just what is your purpose? And when people tap into their purpose, then so many things. Like when you do the self-work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We even when we talk about the working out, like some more stuff work though. healthy, working out, eating mm-hmm. healthy, reading books, like you you being in your word, praying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And just sitting still and yes. like God will expose stuff to you. Get rid of the You know what I'm saying? Get rid of the distractions. So many people are just like, do you understand? Even when we talked about growing my following back and yeah. stuff like that, like I have this thing where I post and I get off because sometimes I'm going to be exposed to stuff that I didn't give permission mm. to go into my aura for that day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I don't want certain things in my space because in order for me to be on an up and up, I need to always be thinking higher yeah. Yeah. and being put towards higher and being around higher. So I want to put in permission. Like, I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. None of that. Like, I want to p- pick the books I read. Mm. And when I'm reading them, now I'm being enlightened doing the things that I need to to get me to the next level yeah what's a book on purpose or that you may have, or one of your well right now books? i'm reading out with in the devil yeah. i read it once before a long time ago yeah, by Napoleon. um yeah. yep i'm reading that right now you have i mean on self-discipline you have brian tracy no excuses but really mark batterson it is draw the circle it's a devotional book but it's not really like a devotional that you just like it's not like one of them devotionals that your grandma give you at christmas yeah. it's like a devotional that is like a 40 day a prayer challenge but it's like it it really makes you think of everything even just associations and understanding like who you are yeah that's good let me ask y'all this because we talk about the successes a lot we know y'all all successful doing y'all thing but what's some things entrepreneurs or people and ladies in general we need to be looking out for that that you like damn i wish i would have saw this bump in the road or is there anything like that, maybe on the financial side, that we need to be looking out for? Or in whatever side, I don't know if y'all got anything that y'all may have went through that you like, I don't want nobody had to go through this. I think, um, so one of the things when you mentioned kind of self-work, um, a lot of what I'm able to articulate is because I've been going to therapy since 2017. So I've made a commitment. I went on TV one time, Fox News, and you know how you take a picture, you do a video and you look like, you're looking for what's wrong with you. And I didn't see anything wrong. And it was like, I didn't really sign up to be in the light. I just wanted to change the world. And I remember my mentor saying to me, well, it's selfish of you to hide who you are from the world knowing what you know. And when he said that, that was the first time I took the initiative to accept whatever comes in my like path and opportunity, I'm gonna take it. So like I've written for like Forbes and like, I'm not a writer, but maybe somebody thinks I'm good at it, right? And I think because of that, therapy and getting clear on why I'm scared, what happened in my childhood, what doubts and fears pop up. Nobody ever talks about the 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 doubts, worries, and fears that come with making money. Because when you, I, I grew up in a two-parent household and we were okay, but I was making more money than both my parents when I was in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. But we never struggled, but I've been kicked out of places before building a business. And so I technically suffer PTSD because I'm afraid of not having because I know what it feels like to not have. And the more you accumulate, if you don't, if you've never had it, you're not solely familiar with it or identify with wealth. Right. And so I think for me, but even though I saw it as I started to make money, I wanted to make sure I never lost it. And even no matter if it's a million dollars or 10,000 or a hundred thousand, whatever, I think I went through a phase of life where you got to recognize making money sometimes is connected to trauma because you're so accustomed to not having money Mm. so much that we don't know what to do with it. And we're not in the best position. And I think even though I saw what I saw on Wall Street, I mean, I remember making my first million and and it, it, it felt like nothing to me. Like and it's like you've dreamt of this day. But all I thought about is how disconnected I was from more people. And it's like, okay, well, what do you need to do to feel connected with who you are, but also feel worthy of having money? And I think because I've made mistakes with money, because I've not had money, I've been kicked out places. I think it's it's growing your identity with who you want to be as the money accumulates. And I think for me, the more money I made at a certain point, because I started to recognize like, girl, if you're gonna say you want to be a billionaire, this little million ain't nothing. Like, what you doing? But intentionally surrounding yourself around the equivalent to what Wall Street was to me. So much that it's, 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 it's a big deal to you and you got to celebrate it. But being around people that don't make you feel bad for having the things that you that you want. Like I was recently on a podcast 
and I'm sitting there talking about the kind of car I want to get and what I want to do and how, you know, I'm, I'll go to places like, I don't want to eat here. I want my, I want my, my hotel to look this way, but I've had people I've been around where that doesn't matter to them. So now I feel like an outcast because I want a housekeeper. I don't like folding clothes. I want, I want somebody to fold my clothes. I can cook cool, but I don't have time. And it's like, when you're not around people who that is, that's, that's, has normalized that, yeah sometimes your self doubt kicks in. And so I think one of the things I had to kind of check myself, it's like, it's okay to, to, to dream big and accomplish big, but you gotta be okay with the bigness that comes with who you're becoming. Mm. And I think for me, I had to do a lot of self reflection. Like, well, why are you feel uncomfortable? Or why do you feel like this is not a lot when this is what you've always dreamt of having? And I think I had to go sit and have a conversation. Well, maybe you're uncomfortable because you didn't grow with a lot of money and you feel disconnected from the people who made you feel bad for having money. Mm -hmm. And so, I think talking about that and having those conversations and also accepting the fact that you are who you are to your team. I was at a conference not too long ago with the former CEO of Ford and he said, when you're a leader, your facial expression no longer belongs to you. Mm. And it was like, I never thought of it like that. And I, you know, if I'm having a bad day, you're gonna know, but that's not fair to my team. Mm. That's not fair to the people I love. And it's like, if these people are looking at you in this light, you gotta recognize, you gotta be the best version of you every single day and you always gotta work on yourself to become the person you dreamed of becoming. And so for me, it's a lot of internal work that it's like you could you could see the things on social media, but you don't necessarily know what they went through to accomplish that or what they're dealing with having that. Mm. Um, and so for me, I, I, I can't afford, I was talking to my sister and she was like, going, you know, going back to therapy. I'm doing really good right now. It's like, no, you need therapy the most when you're doing your best. Mm. And it's like, it's, it's, it's every day I learn, I, I still got work to do. And I've been doing this for years because there's a new level that I'm accomplishing. And I can't see life without having a, a, an executive team around Ashley and her brain, her heart, her physical body. And it's like, I would pay thousands of dollars to make sure that I'm growing in every area of my life. And I think people don't recognize that. But when you start to get the money, you are worth the investment. And sometimes you got to use the experts who are following their dreams to help you follow your dreams. It's mm -hmm. good. She deep. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, good. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I'll say one of the things... Um, when you start making money, a lot of times you make poor decisions with the mm -hmm. money, right? Yeah. Especially when you're not accustomed. I, I've been right? there. <laughs> yeah, when you're not accustomed to having it, you know, and like the household I grew up in, we were fine. My, my parents did very well financially, so I didn't, we didn't grow up poor. I didn't mm. want for anything, yeah. you know, it was not that type of situation. But of course, the money that we made was different than the money my parents yeah. made. Like my mom right. was making six figures a year and back in the 80s and 90s, that's a lot of freaking money, right? That's, that's crazy. Exactly, yeah. it's crazy, right? We can, live, we can live very very well, but now six figures a year, it's like, okay, you know, yeah. you can live decently, sure. But the thing is, is that what does money look like? Mm -hmm. We have this stigma, especially in our community where we feel like if you're not driving a certain type of vehicle, if you're not wearing a certain type of brand, then that means that you haven't made it. Mm. And I think that's a pitfall that we fall into where we don't take those resources and put them in places that can generate more money, more money. for us. Right. And so that's one of the things, one of the biggest mistakes I made is that when I had, <laughs> not when I had, when I was making like, crazy, crazy amounts of money, I was shopping, right? Mm -hmm. Just shopping, shopping, shopping. And I'm like, it's not taking anything yeah. away. Everything's still paid. We're still saving. We can still mm -hmm. travel. We're still investing. We're still doing these things. But I'm just buying all this stuff. And That's what, I'm the, I was the complete opposite. I oh. was so afraid to not have any more money yeah. that I was like a hoarder. I, had to, I got to a point where it's like, you could save, 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 but you won't go shopping. Or you could spend all the money and like either, both people have something they gotta work on. And it was mm -hmm. like, I had to literally, I remember I went to Phipps one time, we had like just made the most money we ever made in like a month. And I'm like, go ahead, Ashley, go shopping. And it was so, I feel like probably $13,000. And it was so easy for me to spend, but it was like, I was so afraid to spend the money because I was mm -hmm. so afraid to lose okay. it because I was never used to having it. Yeah. It's so funny. I'm, I literally the complete. I will like. I won't. I won't even spend. Like I had to like challenge myself to go buy some shoes. Actually, right, like, right. Yeah, but that's that. Our community is like really, really heavy on because people mm -hmm. who haven't made it, so to speak, who have no business walking around with a two thousand dollar handbag, Fact. walking around with a two thousand. Because in their mind, that puts the optic out there that they've got something. Mm. And we need to move away from that and I really agree. start taking our resources and putting it into places that can generate more, more money, money. Mm -hmm. where we can have trust funds for our children, mm. you know, set it up the way other nationalities set up for their children, generational wealth for mm. the family, the members they'll never ever meet, right? Yeah. 
But we have this stigma of if you don't drive a certain vehicle, if you don't wear a designer, if you just don't have these things that you are you really making money? Right. And it sucks that it's set up that way. But we have to move away that from is that. Crazy. And it's one of the pitfalls that I see all the time. And it's like, if I could do it all over again, it's so many things. Once we were robbed, and this is probably the first time I ever said this mm. publicly, yeah. when our house was broken into and they cleared my closet out, mm. it was like I have spent all this money on all these material things. Some of the things I can't replace because they'll never make them again. Yep. You know, and it's like, dang, I've wasted wasted so much money. I could have taken that money and invested it here and there and, yep. and had something to show for it versus now someone's broken into my home and stolen these things from me and I can't replace them. Yeah. Nor do I want to anymore. Yeah. But it made me have a different mindset of money and what we should do with money. It's nothing wrong with living well. It's nothing wrong with having a nice thing that you like. But when you think that mentally, that means that you've arrived based off of the material things that you can show to the world, that's the problem. It is. Mm -hmm. And I see it all the time. I know we all do sitting on this couch. We see it all the time. And I, we really just as a people need to move away from that stigma that means absolutely nothing, You're nothing. Right but take that. that money and start creating a generation of wealth. There, I wish we had bought certain homes yeah. when the market was crazy and you Girl. could buy a home for fifteen thousand dollars. You know, I, I wish. I was talking about the other day. Me and my man used to go to the auction. Cribs was like a, a grand, yeah, five thousand in Philly. You know, we used to go to the auction at Thirty Eighth and Market. <laughs> and they had they had cribs that like stay or like people passed on them a thousand dollar homes. I'm like. What what a time! Exactly. And my, I think my, we could do both. Yeah, I think I think like we like shiny things. I like nice things. It should always tell people you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. But one thing that I do is like, okay, you could go spend a couple thousand dollars here. Make sure you put a couple thousand dollars here. You invest it's it back. Find you. That's yeah. The right. Issue. Right. There's nothing wrong yeah. with having nice things, having a nice home, driving a nice car. All of those things are well and good. But you also have to have other things on the back end set right. up too. That yeah. can't be what you want the world to, to see you as, and that means that you, you you're doing something. Because you can't cash in on a on a on a pocketbook. No, like that joint don't give you no return unless no. it's a certain bag. But no one's buying them. Like, well, this is going to give me a return right. in in a couple. Weeks. I think you said so. That's I think that plagues a lot of us though. Mm -hmm. And another one is living above our means. That crap will get you that out part. of here. Like yeah. just yeah. You could do that in business too. I found myself. Because I know I'm capable of making money, mm. sometimes I feel like I think you're spending too much because everything is an investment in my business. And it's like, I can go make it back. I done made it before I could do this again. This yeah. is because it gets to a certain point, too, where certain expenses don't seem like a lot of money. Mm. But when you look at the numbers, it, it I remember I was it talking about, I was in my account, and it's like, this is how much we spend every month? But it's like, you know, two, three thousand here. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's like, well, I could go make it. And it's just like, I, I, I think for me personally, even being in finance, it's like it's different learning how to invest and it's a different managing money for yeah. a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in a, I'm not in a position yet where I now see it, but like where you need I see why a CFO is somebody you need to hire because it's sometimes challenging for me to let me sit down and manage the money, and make sure we're on track because your accountant's job is not to be a CFO, which I've learned. You need somebody to be a CFO and somebody to help you avoid taxes and manage your taxes. But sometimes the, your ability to create money leads with your ability to invest money back into your business when you got to properly manage it. And I think, I know I didn't learn that in college, but learn how to properly manage money and hire the right people to help you manage. One that you can trust, but also somebody that's actually skilled at what you do. Because in my mind, I can make millions of dollars, but I can spend millions of dollars in my business yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, I had to stop the episode. Listen, really quick. This is the book responsible for making so many people grow their social media, right? Their income, their impact and influence, leveraging social media. And you're probably looking at it like, yo, Neil, I don't feel like waiting for you to ship me this book, right, y'all? Go to my IG cash book right now, myigcashbook.com. Get a direct download to get this in your inbox so you can immediately start leveraging the strategies. This is over 86 pages. Every single chapter is going to give you a gym to grow your audience, to grow your impact, and to grow your, your influence, right? And I literally created it for you. This is the same thing that I literally watch people go crazy with. So go to myigcashbook.com. Go ahead and claim your copy. It will be in your inbox. And when you do that, buy everything that it comes with. I got an IG course with it and a bunch of other things that I know is going to truly help you go crazy. Myigcashbook.com. Let's go. I was juggling new motherhood business. How, how is that? Time allocation is very important mm. because I'm such a 
organized, scheduled person that when a baby comes out, your schedule is not really it, it's your baby schedule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like your schedule don't matter. It's, it's your baby window. schedule that matters. So um, time allocation is like super important. I would say. I mean, I know that's like how, a short. How, how are you managing that now? No, is it uh you get up earlier? Or do you like how are you managing trading and running the business? Well, yeah, well, I think that's a. I know you got thing. a little. You have some help too. So no, I think that's the beautiful thing about me. Like, I mean, I would say all the time, and people have probably heard this before. I am not a businesswoman. <laughs> I am a trader. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's you know like mm -hmm. it's 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 two different yeah. entities. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to have a lot of employees that I have to sit and like like it's a headache to me for my personality type. Yeah. It doesn't work well for me. I just like to wake up, see if I see a setup for the day, take the trade, compound it, and keep growing money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am not really the business woman that, you know, I, I do know that I need to scale. And I think that's the place that I am right now. Like, OK, what's my next thing now that I can make money with my eyes closed? What's my next thing that I am looking to do outside of changing the world in the school and so yeah. forth like that? But it's like, I mean, at the same time, though, I'm also I'm just I just turned 30. So I think that there's so much growth and room for my future in terms of building businesses yeah um even listening to you you're like really inspiring i'm literally like oh wow yeah like okay yeah because people ask me to manage accounts and stuff like that all the time like i don't really i don't have the capacity not only that the legalities that mm -hmm. comes along with that yeah. you know what i'm saying um federal trade commission like all these different things like i just literally like to sit back and make money for myself <laughs> And that's okay. Jessica is out the way. That's okay. okay. And I think you said something. You got a, and you said it earlier when you said to Helani, like, let me go start a clothing brand because Helani started a clothing brand. That may not be for you. Like, yeah. we all up here got different personalities. Yeah. Like, yeah. SC structure as well. Yeah. Like, well, Helani structure, y'all all pretty much yeah. structure. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. It ain't no wing. It's not our right, guys. Let's fly out to Rome tonight type of right. thing. Yeah. I don't think so. Any, yeah, no, 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 right. Yeah. So me, yeah, I, Rome. Yeah, yeah. Out. <laughs> right, right. I'm out. Bet. He at the airport trying not, to book only, the flight. I don't even got a bag. <laughs> but but um, basically, I think people got to really understand what works for you because yeah. you got to live with you. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. But I think too, just like understanding, you know, when most people start businesses, they start businesses to make money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People take careers to make money. And with me, it's like, I make money without the businesses or the career. So the passion fulfilling thing is really just helping people. But I know that like, even what, what, kind of what you just said about like, you know, you're selfish if you keep this stuff to yourself. You're mm -hmm. selfish if you don't really pay it forward and like try to help people's lives and stuff like that. So that's why I want to start the school in Tanzania. I mean, I'm a fully funded. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm not really getting anything out of it, but it's like, it's over there, they make like one to five dollars a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I cannot even fathom like what, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you have to be called to do that stuff though. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why it's important. Cause you go through so, I mean, me saying I've, I do not like uh, e-commerce and I know that. And, and it's like, while it may look sexy, but you you got to go through so much to make it successful. And you, you got to yeah. be willing to go. Like for me, there's no plan B. You give me a hundred million dollars right now, I'm waking up every day to do what I do because this is who I am. And yeah. I think when we chase after money, you're always going to find somebody that has more of it. Something's always yeah. going to be shinier. So you're always going to be chasing and never mm -hmm. really feel, be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to recognize, like I've sat with people and they're like, somebody said to me, there's a difference between a founder and a CEO. And it's like, I'm learning what it means to, to own a business but to also be a CEO. Like mm -hmm. I have to make the decision now. I like, I'll talk to my partner. Call me out if my face doesn't look good because I know when I show up to work every day, my team feels a certain type of way if my face mm -hmm. doesn't give them the motivation they need to excel. And it's like, you don't have to do that. You don't, you, nobody, you, you can go home and have all the faces, all the attitudes, all you want. Me, I got to show up every day and be a CEO. Mm -hmm. And that has to be a conscious choice yeah. because the bigger your team gets, the more people you have watching yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And I think the internet makes people feel like everything is so sexy. But when she said to me, do you really want to be a CEO? And it's kind of like, well, if I'm gonna build a business that's sold for three billion, I'm not doing this alone. So I yeah. gotta learn how to be a CEO. Yeah. And that's my next big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important. I think that's beautiful. Cause yeah, I don't want employees. Like one of my mentors, she got like 
7,000 employees. Her name's CEO Nicole. She's an amazing businesswoman. But like me, I can't no, even I think about that. Keep me off the way. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm the I same like when the term, the I want a lean team that's fire. Yeah. yeah. Give me 10 to 20. <laughs> yep. Effective, Re- effective people. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some yeah. effective people. I just want to make money, spend time with my baby and my fiance. Yeah. I want to I want to be Amazon. Yeah. I want Amazon. You want like big. It's, I, yeah, every big. time I, I have issues with my staff or I got to grow, it's like, if Jeff Bezos can build this and he's the second largest employer in America, mm. you can do this, Ashley. Who's and that's the first? Walmart. Walmart. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But that's like my, it's like, look, you got, I think we're like a team of seven, eight people. Like, you want, you need Jeff Bezos' money. You, but, but it's not even just Bezos' money, it's impact for me. Yeah. For me, right. it's like, like, if you could hit a billion people, you can make a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. But my desire to hit a billion is because if I, I know people now that are going to sell their business for over a billion dollars. I think by the time I'm in a position to even build a business of that magnitude, it'll be something small, right? Like it's, it's you got trillion dollar businesses out here, you could give me one billion. But in my mind, it's like, okay, I want three because even if I own 33% of my business, I would cash out as a billion and that's never been done before. So for me, it's like the money's gonna come. You're gonna but, do it because you know them numbers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she definitely yeah. gonna hit that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. to me, it's like, I want you to see a black woman do that. Mm-hmm. Like the money is like, that's, I mean, at a certain point, you have enough money, but it's like, I want the world to see a black woman do that, but use her intellect to do it and not necessarily have to be a musician or things like that. It's like, what if what if you actually see someone who has the, is educated do something to change the world? The money's gonna come, but to me it's like, if, if I can't let employees and my not my ability to not know how to be the best CEO yet stop me from impacting the world. So for me, if Jeff, Be- Jeff Bezos could change the world, we yeah. could get stuff in a, in a matter of days, I could teach people financial education and be what McDonald's fries is to the world to and empathize what financial education is to the world. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, yeah. Talk that talk. Yeah. Well, ladies, y'all, this was fire. I'm just let y'all all close it out with one piece of advice, a word of, word of wisdom and let people know how they could tap in with y'all. I want the gym. Give me the gym plug. Okay. <laughs> give me the gym plug. What's the gym? Give, give me, I'm, I'm listening to the gym plug. <laughs> Oh the gym! Oh the gym plug! Yeah, I'm I'm a, a, I no, I want her. I go ahead, do your plug. I want, I want the details on the gym. Come on. Oh, I'm gonna get the gym yeah. plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think that I think one of the biggest takeaways from this conversation is that I love how every single one of us does life how we want to do it. Yes, I enjoyed that. And I think that's really, really important to live life the way you, you enjoy living it. life, the way you want to do it. Like you said, you're not a businesswoman. That's fine. <laughs> you are right. Yeah. But you're learning how to be a great right. CEO right now, you know. And so you take your life in stride in the way that it works for you and yours, you know. I'm not motivated by money. Money is great to have, but I'm not motivated by it. You know, motivating for me is being able to truly, I'm a service-based person, always have been. So providing a service that makes an impact is what's important to me. Mm-hmm. And so operate in what's important to you. The money follows. Yeah. Right. You know, so you can find me on Instagram. I miss this two weeks out. Um, Body Envy is the brand. The Body N is in Nancy, V is in Victor. Check out underscore Real Houses of Atlanta. <laughs> Check tough. out the Loft Atlanta here. Listen, the list goes on and on, but check me out. So many different things that I have that could be of service to you and your household. Um, I have a ebook that this one right here pushed me to write about transitioning from nine to five to becoming your own boss. It sets out exactly the plan on how to do it because that's a whole nother conversation yeah. leaving a nine to five to that's start okay. a full-time entrepreneurship um, journey. journey it's different and if you don't set yourself up properly then you're setting yourself up for failure so that's and fact. then last but not least understand that you're in the position that you're in because you're comfortable with where you are and mm. so if you want to change what you have currently going on you have to be okay with understanding that you're not where you want to be yeah. so understanding starts here first with you that's good Mm, that was deep. <laughs> if I had to give, that was real deep. If I had to give any advice, it would literally be, I mean, really what I said, follow God, man. Like God more than anything, your God given self, like no matter what you want to do in this world, if God did not ordain it, 
You know what I'm saying? If he didn't put his anointing on it and his blessings on it, like it will not manifest. And just understanding who you are, understanding God and him inside of you really leads you towards your purpose. So just walking with him and really just letting him lead. You know what I'm saying? Like people go out here and network, try to meet this person, try to meet this person. Like at the end of the day, if you follow God, God are going to bring the people that you need to in your life to be around you and to surround you for you to get to that next place. So um, really, that's the most important thing. I'm Jessica Lane. It's Jessica Lane on Instagram. It's a whole bunch of scam pages. I was about to say, <laughs> you so, got the most fake pages I have ever seen yeah, on social you, and media. And you trade, for, you trade Forex too? Forex, yeah. Ooh, yeah, I hate crazy. it. Ooh. But the, the crazy thing is, I never post about Forex on my page mm, for the most part strictly because of that, all of yeah. the scamming that is there. Like, yeah. I'm talking about somebody got scammed out of $50,000 because they thought that they were sending it to mm-hmm. me to trade. Yep. That's <laughs> another thing I do not trade for <laughs> anyone, you guys. So anybody that is pretending to be me it is not me i will not reach out not to that, you. my boy <laughs> i will not reach out to you whatsapp telegram facebook the whole nine it, it's not me she will not so. be hitting you up i will not <laughs> <be> sliding <laughs> in your dm so. she got a virtual event that you can learn from now. don't don't hit her up yeah. the Go conference ahead. um so for me i think i think you ladies touched on the intangibles I think one of the biggest things, being a woman in finance, it's important for us to understand that whether we are employed, we want to start a business, struggling in business, struggling in our careers, effectively building wealth and leaving a family legacy um, is important. Mm. And I feel like because I saw it on Wall Street, wealth does not have a color. Therefore, it looks like all of us. Mm. And no matter how you're accumulating it, you have to recognize and identify with wealth. And I think that starts with who you love and look at in the mirror every day. So my biggest thing is whether you have a lot of money or a little bit, start small and build big, be consistent. Um, my company is Empify. You can go to Empify.com, our Wealth Builders Community app, WealthBuildersCommunity.com. I am hosting a five-day virtual summit focusing on building wealth and utilizing and investing as a way to create cash flow, to create consistent cash flow, no matter with how, how much you are starting with or how many mistakes you have made in the past. So you can go to mycashflowcreation.com, five straight. I mean, we learned a lot during this, this segment, just talking about life and who we are as business owners. But now you get me into a space where I'm able to educate you to take what I learned on Wall Street and bring it to the everyday person over the course of five days straight, where we're not just learning, we're putting in the actionable steps that we need to effectively build wealth. So you can go to mycashflowcreation.com. It's going down. I'm here. I'm excited. I'm not going anywhere. And I think you have these phenomenal people with this to show you that, it's a lot more than what you see on Instagram and it's a lot more into who you are and digging deep into you to become the best version of you every single day. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. I can't say nothing after that. So (laughs) listen, y'all, make sure you follow all of these amazing ladies. We'll have everything that they got going on in the description below. And uh, again, we just getting started. Tune into the next uh, show. See you soon.